This conference will now be recorded. We need to have a quick session about SDLC process as I explained yesterday, right? Because it's about stages of SDLC, right? The models yeah. of Agile and all that. So we had a session because I'm just giving you a high level explanation about this app. Yeah? Then I'll go there. So once it is completed, we'll yeah, jump okay. into objects and all. Okay, this is how we go. Let me explain you about in a high level explanation about this. Usually it's a customer management is which is an inbuilt application which was there. Where whatever the objects we want to create those objects and all everything can be created with reference to this. Right? So it was already predefined since we don't require anything. And whatever the kind of object types you could see in the left hand side either if you want to connect to the system or if you want to connect from the data stores and all that. This is absolutely of our choice depends on the requirements of the project. What exactly we require means for example in this object types assume that we want to create some process models. Right process models for something required. Or else for example if you want to create some user interfaces right so interfaces and all everything we have to create with reference to the project. At the same time. With reference to business process management, if you want to create any kind of reports, some visualized reports and all that, so that visualized reports and all everything can also be selected here. As far as the object type I'm, itself is concerned, I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about only object, right? not anything apart. Next, these objects can be integrated. For example, there are, as far as Appian, the advantage in BPM tools, especially in Appian, is that we can integrate with other applications as well. For example, as I mentioned you, there is an option called RPA, right? In Appian. What is RPA stands for robotic process automation, wherein you can automate some processes and all, which can be done by us for sure. That integration part, integrating with other applications, for example, if you want to integrate with some confluence or something of that sort, right? Something like Bitbucket or something like Confluence or Atlassian products you want to integrate with. As a part of Agile I'm talking about, right? For example, if you are using Agile environment here, what we have to do, whatever the low code management we do, that low code management has to be uh, connecting with something like Bit, uh, GitHub and all that, right? So Bit, because GitHub is the one which will be used as a code management repository. At the same time, Confluence and all everything will be used for the documentation part. Okay, at the same time, if you are using for integration, for example, if you want to integrate multiple codes, for example, database code you want to integrate, you want to create integrate this HTML code, means uh, front end page codes I'm talking about, either HTML or whatever the technology we use. Otherwise, we want to use some Java code. So all these integrations and all, Jenkins can be integrated, right? Jenkins, Ansible, right? So we have a lot of tools nowadays, like Kubernetes, DevOps tools. So, Appian in this Appian, the kind of objects what we are creating, whatever the integrations do we require and all that, those integrations can be incorporated here. At the same time, if you want to create some web APIs, web services and all that. Why? Because, for example, you want to connect for other website. For example, you have a login, you have your Gmail account. I'm just giving you a rough example. You have a Gmail account. Now, nowadays, if you see any social networking websites and all everything, if you want to connect with, you don't require to sign in as separate. What we can do, we can use our own login credentials of Gmail account to access that website. Am I right or not? That is how it happens. So, how it happens, there is a web service which will be written in back of it. Without writing web services and all, you cannot, you are not authorized to connect. For example, if you are using a connect, if you are using your Facebook account or you are using LinkedIn account nowadays, professional websites like LinkedIn and all that. Yeah. How are you connecting all that? How you are connecting? You are connecting using your Gmail account. Am I right or not? Right? You are not creating any sign up as separate. We have an option. Now, there are some permissions because Facebook or LinkedIn doesn't allow other users to access their websites. So for that, there is a web services in back of it, which will be connecting with other applications. Means using your Gmail account, you can connect either LinkedIn website or Facebook or some other XYZ. So this is where generally web services plays a vital and important role. So 
in this web services there is a part called as api stands for application programming interface means if you want to connect with other applications and all that this web apis and all everything is being used in this web services we have different different things if you take web services as an example let me write For example, if you are working on web services, APIs will be there, right? Application programming interfaces, right? So APIs, different APIs will be used. At the same time, we can connect with SOAP. SOAP, UDDI, WSDL, all these will be there. So, SOAP is a protocol. Usually in web services, there is a concept called SOAP. SOAP stands for simple, simple access, simple object access. access protocol. Right? This is what we call it as SOAP. Using this SOAP protocols and all that, so web services can be accessed. These web services can be connecting with any kind of applications and all that. So these options, what are the options you could see on the left hand side with reference to the object type is concerned? Depends on the project, depends on the need of the need, need of our project is concerned, is required. So all these can be connected. Either you can integrate applications or else you can connect using web APIs and all that. Or else if you want to generate any kind of reports can be used. If you want to create any kind of process models in order to make your work more simplified. At the same time, you can create some interfaces and all. All these have to be added here. So then only whatever the activity do we require to manage, everything can be integrated and incorporated in this Appian VPN. Clear? Yeah. No? You are clear or not? Yeah. Clear, Aishi? Clear or not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I am clear. Right. right. So here we have an option called new. Right. So if you want to create new add, add data, data, data types and all that, so these data types are data stores and all everything being created. Or else if you want to create some process models, as I mentioned here, as we already initiated, so we have to create some more our, our own process models right from the scratch. Whatever the project we do, that process models and all everything created. So what I'm going to do is I'll take a sample project and how to create the project, how to create these process models, how to create these object types and all everything will be coming under next sessions. What are the next sessions are we going to conduct? All these things will be taking place using this Appian VPN console. console. Clear, okay. Aishi? Yeah. Right. So this is how the structure goes. As far as your requirements is concerned, I'll start with a sample project. Based on the sample project, I'll create a project and I'll show you so that whatever the objects creation, whatever the process models, everything will be included yeah. in that same thing itself, right? In the same thing. So that uh, you'll get some live exposure on this, right? Now, okay. coming to the basics part, as I mentioned you, we are talking about the SDLC part, right? Stands for Software Development Lifecycle. Wherein we have different things. First of all, we must be knowing about analysis. Followed by planning and design. Next will be called as implementation. Testing. Deployment. Delivery. Followed by maintenance. Maintenance. Okay. So these are. So these are different different stages which will be there in SDLC. Means analysis, planning, design, implementation, testing, deployment, delivery, followed by maintenance. In this analysis phase here, we understand
the business problem of the client trust. Okay, now how to understand the business problem? If you want to understand the business problem, there are two things. One is you must be knowing about the existing system. You must be knowing about the proposed system as well. Existing followed by proposed system. Existing system nothing but a process which is using by the client at this time. This is what we call it as existing system. Assume that there was an existing business process which is being used by the customer in the present situation. This is what usually this existing system usually will be called as as is. Understand? This is called as as is. The terminology we use called as as is. Now will be called as proposed system. This proposed system will be called as to be. Okay. Here the process or solution what we are developing according to the need of the client this is what we call it as proposed system means there are two things either for example let us take our business process bpm as example either you can enhance the existing bpm to the next level means you are adding some new features and functionalities are you you are adding some new services into the existing business process that can be done or else you are creating a new application for the customer either you are adding new features and functionalities to the existing application that can be done or else we can develop a new application as separate understand please then. yes right that or this yeah. This is what becomes under analysis space. In analysis space, this is irrespective of the role you play. Either you may be a business analyst or you may be a developer. So whatever the explanation I am going to provide, this is irrespective of it. Right? Maybe usually in this analysis space, business analyst plays a vital role than developers. Remember this. Right? Usually BA plays a vital and important role in analyzing the business problem. Once the business problem been identified, the next will be called as planning and design. Here, whatever the solution we identified must be identified, we must do project plan. Right. Project planning should be done by us. Usually, this project planning will be taken care of by the project management team. Project management team will take care of this project planning and all that. Right? How much require? Uh, how much manpower is resource is required for this? How to execute the project? What is the timelines we have to complete this? All these things will be decided under. Project planning and followed by project planning and design. Architect. This is where architect or designers, architect, I can say, Appian architects, or else BPM architects and all that. These architects will develop architecture for the project. Will develop architecture for the project. Right. So why architecture is needed because without architecture providing solutions would be difficult because even though you are a developer here in the wherein you are expert in developing logical skills or you can be imparting the logical skills for the project 
but being a uh, implementation expert or a developer you need to have a roadmap for the project to create means without having a roadmap you are not you cannot develop the project for any customer needs usually to create a roadmap architect will provide solution architecture right so first of all we'll have enterprise architecture first based upon the enterprise architecture we go for business architecture from business architecture we develop solution architecture so a architect will prepare a solution architecture for the project means he creates or he or she will create roadmap to create the project so this architecture will be of two different types one is high level and second is low level high level architecture how the projects looks like from external side from outside whereas internal architecture means what integrations do we need to use what kind of modules or what kind of programs do we require to develop in order to maintain this application and all that so this is all comes under internal architecture means external architecture followed by the internal architecture will be there in this planning and design phase right so this is where so before you're going for a development you need to have a proper project planning like how much manpower resource do we require to work on this what are the timelines do we have to develop the project at the same time apart from all this we must be having a roadmap to develop the project in real environment means we need to have a roadmap to develop the project in real environment this is what we call it as planning and design phase is all about next followed by planning and design the next was implementation here developers or implementation team will develop logic for the project yeah. one thing uh, like in this planning and uh, design phase uh, in what form the architect will provide the architecture like is this so something you, like erd or something see erds and all see you are talking about entity relationship diagrams entity relationship diagrams is being used for a database database design usually right because there are different different designs will be there high level designs low level designs all that high level design will give you the overall picture of the project low level design will tell you about what are all the internal modules internal programs do we need to develop okay, okay. but being an architect solution architecture will be prepared by the architect it's not that they are going to prepare erds and all that because there are different different diagrams solution architecture as separate that will be prepared by the solution architect ERD stands for entity relationship diagrams this will be prepared by the database team for database designing ERDs right because ERDs respective only for database designing and all database teams will prepare that now you have other diagrams called UML diagrams unified modeling language these UML diagrams will be of different types like use cases classes objects sequence collaboration diagrams component diagrams deployment diagrams means during the tenure of the project for example if you want to deploy the application before you're going to deploy the application there is a deployment procedure we write as a developer you know right we have to write a deployment procedure there are deployment procedure means steps of deploying the application yeah. right or not right what steps we have to consider yeah. to manage this or to explain this deployment diagram is being used as separate next component diagram component diagrams nothing but for example there are lot of hardware and software components we are using to develop the project for example let us take a point of sale system what is point of sale system point of sale system is a billing system okay so whenever you are working on point of sale system whenever you are using this billing system usually there are different different hardware components we use like barcode reader scanners all that right how are we integrating this in the project this is what something required when we are working on so for that 
component diagram is being used. Now, sequence and collaboration. For example, if you are performing an activity or if you are performing an action, so how to perform user, how user have to use this application? There is a sequential procedure have to be followed. That sequences and collaborations and all everything is being used using sequence and collaboration diagram. Okay. Understand? Next, yeah. use case diagram. Use case diagram explains you about the high level view of the project. For example, there is an ATM system. How ATM system looks like externally? There are different different users, right? Customer is one user. Second, we have another user called a person who deposit care, who, who uh, install cash in the ATM system. Next, you will be having uh, an ATM technician, right? So three people are using ATM system. And three, three type of end users are using ATM system for any different reason. If you are a customer, you are using ATM system to deposit money and to withdraw money. For example, if a person who wants to fill the cash, right? Whenever there is a shortage of uh, cash is available in ATM, if someone who is going to deposit money, that, those responsibilities are separate. ATM yeah. technician responsibility will be as separate because whenever there is a problem occurs in an ATM system, troubleshooting will be taken care of by the ATM technician. So the kind of responsibilities, what they render and all everything will be as separate. So the same way to explain the overall view of ATM system, primary actors, what are the primary actors and how these primary actors are working on. So for that, the kind of diagram we use is called as use case. So solution architecture is separate. I'll, I'll, I'll take a separate session on solution architecture. You will be understood very well. I'll take it as separate because it deviates now. So I'm not going more in detail. Yeah. So solution architecture is separate. Entity relationship diagrams are separate because that is exclusive only for database designing. And UML diagrams and all everything as separate, which will explain to you about the kind of use cases we are using, the kind of sequential process we follow for the project clear Aishi, right yeah so whatever we talk about whatever these ERDs or uh, use cases whatever uh, uh, the solution architectures all these things comes under planning and design phase of the project this is all comes under but make sure you need to you need to identify the solution first so once the solution been identified being the people whoever is responsible under planning and design usually project manager architect all these people will be business analyst sometimes all these people will be involving in planning and design phase of the project now next is implementation here developers will develop logic by writing code for example whatever the technology we use, right? you may be using different technologies here Java, C, etc. Right? Java, C, C, plus, plus, etc. I'm just giving the rough figure. Right? Yeah. So using different different programming languages, developer will write code for the project what we have decided. Okay. Now, yeah. followed by testing. Yeah. Followed by this testing. Here in this testing, testers we test the functionalities. And identify if any bugs arise. Right. So this is what generally testing team do. For that, they use different different tools. Anyway, you know, right? So different different testing tools and all everything will be used by the testing team to do all this. This is what comes under testing. Means whatever the functionalities will be developed by us, that will be tested by the testing team. So once testing is completed, the next is deployment. Here, there will be a deployment team as separate who deploy the code 
which was done by implementation team. Right? This is what we call it as deployment team. It means usually earlier days. I, again, here is a thing which I have to explain you. Earlier, if you see in older days, even till now, there is a deployment team which will be a separate. The deployment team responsibility is to deploy the code what we have completed so far. Right? They deploy and they will make sure that this will be ready for delivery. Right? This is how it is. Yeah. So in earlier days, if you see implementation team means development team at the same time deployment team will be as separate in older days in earlier days if you see. But nowadays. I hope you might have heard about a concept called DevOps. DevOps. DevOps stands for Development and Operations. Means using DevOps nowadays, what happens? DevOps means development and means this is how the transformation happens. This is the reason why I'm saying all this. Development and operations team. Operations teams means deployment team will work together. So the advantage using DevOps means the process of DevOps the advantage is advantages so that they can complete project in less time with less errors. Right, so that the completion of the project will be much faster because earlier there is a disconnect between development team and deployment team. Deployment team will be working as separate and the development team working as separate deployment team used to work as separate. So there will be a connect disconnect between these two teams. The reason why there are a lot of communication gaps arised so far. And whatever the kind of projects we are working on, everything will leads to delay. Because of this DevOps, the environment of environment. DevOps is an environment, I can say. Simple words. Because of this DevOps environment, in this DevOps environment, what we do, in spite of people, because you could see very less deployment teams as separate in coming days. You don't see any deployment team as separate. In replacement of deployment teams, there are using different different tools in DevOps. Nowadays, people are using something like Jenkins, Ansible, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, next, uh, uh, we called uh, GitHub. All these are being used here. Right? GitHub is a tool which will be used for code management. Means. Whatever the code, for example, you have written database code. I have written a programming code. Someone has written user interface, HTML code and all. So if you want to incorporate and if you want to integrate all these, it means if you want to maintain a repository for the code management, GitHub, all these will be used. Yeah. Next Jenkins is a integration tool. Means three different codes are there. Three different codes have to be integrated. Manually, it is not possible for us to do all this. So for that Jenkins is being used as an integration tool here. Okay, so nowadays this deployment testing implementation all these are comes under the single umbrella earlier. We used to have a separate thing implementation as separate testing as separate deployment as separate even till today. Most of the projects were in the on the same pace. But because of DevOps environment has introduced environment. Remember DevOps is an environment. It's not separate technology because of DevOps environment. DevOps means development and operations operations means deployment. Team. These two people works together. Testing team will also be a part of it so that the amount of time you are spending to complete the project you are reducing it. Understood clear. Ayush. Yes. Are you clear or not? Yes. Right. So all these people work collaboratively so that the amount of time they are spending will be reduced. So once so this deployment and all is a continuous process because sometimes customer is will ask you in agile environment. For example, if you take an agile environment, why are we using agile environment? 
because customer is asking you to deliver project in bits and pieces means what is required for the customer customer is asking us to provide it as immediate so earlier if you see in olden days the project time for example 6 months is the time for the development of the project after 6 months we used to deliver this is how the situation but nowadays if you see in using this agile environment even in business process management even using bpm and all that whatever the kind of delivery we do with reference to the project is concerned can be done even every month so every month there will be a delivery means after completion of the sprint we are delivering that assignment or that task to the customer so that customer will keep it on live and he start using it that is how the situation has been changed so using this agile methodology the advantages are these now here delivery here we deliver the project to the client so that it will be on live understand clear are you clear yes. or not right yeah right followed by this maintenance here support team or maintenance team will take care of will take care if any problems then i right so this is what we call it as the stages of software development life cycle so being we were into development the first of all if we don't know this stages and all everything should be known to us first followed by this the next is models there are different different models we follow for example waterfall model next b model next incremental and iterative approaches next followed by this agile model or agile so these are the different different models we are using like waterfall model v model incremental iterative agile all these are we are using now waterfall model is a traditional model i hope anyway you are experienced in uh, as a professional working uh, expert you will be knowing it waterfall model means yeah, it's yeah. a traditional model where uh, you don't require any kind of changes happens in the project right you don't see any kind of changes means whatever the work we are going to do everything will happen in one shot means yeah. after analysis phase you are going for planning and design followed by implementation followed by testing and so on this is how generally the process you follow the advantage in waterfall model is that it is very transparent and easy to understand for anyone you don't see any kind of difficulties in it but the disadvantage is this if any changes which customer is expecting you to make out of it that is difficult for you to do because you cannot do any kind of changes in between understand clear yeah are you clear yeah. right so the waterfall yeah. model advantage is it is transparent being a developer or a development team it is very transparent for you guys to work on because you don't see any difficulty in confusion so you can work on comfortably but the disadvantage you feel is this if any changes happens in between the project that it it has its own difficulties because you cannot do any kind of changes in between this is what the disadvantage you can see in waterfall model next will be called as v model what is v model stands for v model stands for verification and validation model means for example if customer is asking you assume that the project to be completed takes 6 months time now customer is asking you to complete project in 3 months he has its own urgency hence customer is asking us to develop the project and to complete the project in 3 months time what you do what we do 
because we cannot complete the project in three months. So what we are doing, we are approaching a process called V model. In this V model, which stands for verification and validation model, what we do here is we are completing project parallelly. Means both implementation as well as testing you are doing parallelly. So the amount of time you are spending to complete the project will be reduced. This is what we call it as V model stands for. Clear, Ayushi. This is what we call it as V model stands for. Next means whenever we have less time to complete the project, V model is being used. Followed by this incremental and iterative approaches. Incremental and iterative approaches means incremental model. Means in each and every stage of the project, you are adding some new increments into the existing thing. This is what we call it as incremental model stands for. Means you are adding new increments into the existing process. This is what we call it as incremental model. Means whenever customer is adding some requirements, you are adding into that. Next, iterative approach. Iterative approach means you are working on some model, giving it to the customer. Whatever the changes customer is, used, is asking us to do, so we are doing those changes accordingly. This is what we call it as incremental or iterative approaches all about. Among all that, Agile is something different. As I already mentioned, Agile is a methodology or a process. More than the methodology and a process, Agile is a mindset. What this mindset you must be? Agile is a mindset such a way that whatever is required for the customer, that will be immediately that will be implemented with immediate effect and it will be delivered within no time. This is what the advantage you could see in Agile. But whereas in waterfall model and other one, in traditional model, you don't see that. But whereas in Agile, the advantage is this. You can develop the project at any point of stage and even this delivery of the project or the work what you have completed so far will be converted into weeks. You don't take months time in Agile, remember. Because almost whatever the sprints you are going to develop in Agile environment will be of two weeks, three weeks and four weeks sprints. It's not something like months, okay? Since within two, three weeks of time, you have to complete the task and you have to follow. Irrespective of the kind of process management tool we use, even in Appian, whenever we are using digital applications, because actually Appian is more successful for e-commerce applications, e-commerce, mobile, digital based. These applications, Appian is more user friendly. I don't say that other uh, BPM, BPM projects can't be used. I don't say that. But Appian, why Appian has more advantages or why Appian is being more used in across industries because of digitalized technology. Whatever the digital applications we are using, whatever the kind of mobile or e-commerce applications we are using, people are tend towards Appian because it has its own user friendliness, which can be incorporated, which can be integrated very fast in a simple methods. This is why Appian is being used, especially for digital applications and all that. So, irrespective of the kind of application we use, either we are using mobile applications or digital applications and all that, the kind of approach which customer is expecting nowadays is very fast. Because you see, if you take e-commerce portal, whatever the offer they will be putting on morning won't be there by the evening. Am I right or not? Right? By the evening, they'll come up with other offer. So, requirements are changing very fast especially in e-commerce nowadays right because yeah. whatever the offer they put in the morning won't be there by the evening right the evening they'll come up with other offers so requirements for the customers are changing nowadays very fast it's not months every day there is a change in requirements are taking place that is how the situation has changed it over a period of time so agile methodology is something useful nowadays because of this reason because whatever is required high priority and all everything will be taking into an account first whatever is the least priority will be taking into next this is how generally agile is being used clear uh Aishi? yeah clear are you clear or not so this is all about sdlc models agile and all that so i'm not going uh, deep into this and we'll jump again into 
happy in front tomorrow onwards, right? So we are going to create an object here at the same time, whatever the kind of process models and all everything. So these process models and all everything will be created. I'll take a sample example, sample case, case study kind of project I'll be taking. So on that, I will show you right from the project, how to create project, how to create objects and all that, how to create process models for that, and how to create web report, web API, how to create reports followed by web API connectivity. Yeah. Tomorrow. And also, uh, Actually, I am also having the access of uh, environment in my uh, organization. So I will try to create the application like whatever I will learn. I will try to implement that at my end yes. as well. And if I will have any issue, I will discuss. Yeah, yeah. So I'll do here. I'll do. I'll show you here. You do the same thing in your environment and you see if any queries yeah, yeah. you can ask. Yeah. OK, sure. Thank you. Okay. Start from right from project creation. We start from there. Right, project right from project creation, we start our work. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, Aishi? Yeah. Thank you.